Hi, welcome to our Wild Trail Adventures event. My name's Joe and I'm the event officer for the RSPB Given Nature Home project in Cardiff. Just to let you know, this is a pre-recorded video, so we won't be able to engage in any live chat. But if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook page and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Although this video is in English, there are Welsh subtitles available. Just click the settings button on the control bar and select subtitles Welsh Cymraeg. We'd also like to remind you that whilst we want you to enjoy the outdoors and use your local green spaces, we wish you to do so in a Covid safe way. So remember the two metre rule and always follow Welsh Government guidelines regarding Covid. So why have we made this video? This week is Wales Outdoor Learning Week organised by Natural Resources Wales and Wales Council for Outdoor Learning. They want to share different ideas on things you can do outdoors whilst learning at the same time. They also want to help you learn about nature and use the outdoors in everyday life. Have you ever climbed a tree, balanced on a log or thrown a stick in the river? If you have, did you know you're developing your strength and your muscles in your body? When you breathe the fresh air and stick your toes in the mud, you're increasing the oxygen and positive energy that gets inside your body, which makes you happier and healthier and helps your brain work even better. Have you ever made a bird feeder? a bag hotel, or planted some flowers or vegetables in a garden. By doing this, you're not only making your little patch look pretty and feeding all sorts of animals, you're also helping to improve the biodiversity of that space, which means you're increasing the number of different animals that can live in that little space. Outside is so much better than in. Outside you can run, scream, balance and feel, smell and observe, breathe and generally have more freedom to explore and be curious. I'm not sure you'd be able to do all of those things indoors as well as you could outdoors. For example, look at this stick I found in the woods earlier. Completely natural. It's bumpy and mossy and smells a little like mud and I can use it as a digger, as a beater to make music or even as a wand. Ta-da! Now, find something wooden in your house, something that's been altered by man. Ask yourself, does it smell? How does it feel? Does it have lots of rough, bumpy bits? Or is it all smooth? Can you dig with it or throw it in a river? Turn it into part of a game? The answer is probably not. I just think some things are better outdoors. Why not put this video on pause and go have a look for something wooden that has been altered by man and something natural and compare how they feel and smell and how many different ways you can play with them, which was more fun. Today, we want to give you some super fun learning ideas you can do whilst out and about in your local green space, whilst remembering to stay safe and follow the Welsh Government COVID guidelines. We'll show you our new website, which is where you can find our new wild trail section and talk also about some great resources that could aid you on your adventures. Uh, so this is the Given Nature a Home in Cardiff website and in the top right hand corner there is an option of English or Cymraeg. So if you hover over the language you want and some options should appear and you just click Wild Trails or Llybraig uh, and Gymraeg. Uh, this page has been made to share walks uh, you discover or already know about in and around the Cardiff area. However, you can upload walks that are anywhere. 
So wild trails are walks you can go on around Cardiff. We've put a few trails up ready for you based on the Wildlife Explorer trails um, created by the Cardiff Park Rangers team. Uh, as time goes on, with a little help from you, we'd like to have many, many more on the website and even some suggestions on what you could do on that trail. Uh, these two are just up uh, to help you get started. We're going to show you how you can turn the Butte Park Wild Trail into an animal safari. Butte Park is one of Cardiff's biggest parks with eight different entrances, each with a notice board containing information about that area of the park and a map. All of the paths are suitable for wheelchair and buggy use. There are plenty of benches and picnic tables, along with large open areas where you can sit and not block any paths. There are plenty of facilities in and around Butte Park, including the Secret Garden Cafe, Summer House Cafe and Pettigrew Tea Room. One of my favourite things to do when I'm in Butte Park is have a go at the seasonal activity, activity trail. There are eight plaques placed around the education centre, just up from the Sophia Gardens entrance to the park. Each of the plaques has a challenge or quiz question, and these change every season. Another really lovely trail to have a go at is the child-friendly Cardiff Story Trail, where your walk turns into an adventure while searching for characters of a story. Look out for the wooden posts with metal plaques and QR codes on. For more information on these trails, Follow the links in the description below. Because Butte Park is so big, I like to take a map. Uh, you can get these maps from Butte Park Education Centre or Pettigrews um, or from the Butte Park website. I don't think I've ever explored the whole park in one go. It's so big. There are several other things I'd like to take on an adventure with me. Would you like to see? So here's my rucksack and what have we got inside? So first, I have my flask of tea, very important. Some water and some snacks. I also have an extra jacket just in case I get cold and some sunscreen just in case it gets hot. A carrier bag, very important to put all my rubbish in so I can take it home. I always carry a little first aid kit around with me too and some hand sanitizer. And I also have my mobile phone so I can take photographs, videos, and share my adventures with my family and my friends. What else do I have in here? I'd like to take a spotter sheet with me to help me identify some of the things I'd like to see. Today, I have my mini beast spotter sheet, and I'm really hoping to see some woodlouse, and maybe even some bumblebees. If you can't get out for a bug safari at the moment, you could watch our virtual bug safari video in the Wild Trail Adventure playlist and let us know how you get on. Fun fact, I love woodlice. Two of the most common species are the pill woodlouse that can curl up in a ball and the common woodlouse. They have an exoskeleton, which is basically the reverse to us. Their skeleton is on the outside as they grow, they shed their old skin, a bit like a snake. To add a challenge to my walk, I've brought my Bug Safari Wild Challenge Sheet to help me find some bugs safely. You could watch our Wild Challenge Bug Safari video to get some useful tips on how to hunt for bugs. It's also in the Wild Trail Adventures playlist. I'm really hoping this will help me find all sorts of bugs, including a wiggly worm or two. Fun fact, worms are covered in tiny hairs, which we can't see with our eyes. They also breathe through their skin.
Remember I mentioned there are some wooden posts with metal plaques and QR codes on dotted around the park? Well, the metal plaques have pictures on them and the Cardiff County Park Rangers have produced these booklets where you can go around and collect rubbings of all the different pictures. The whole trail has 16 posts and is quite long. It takes you from one end of Butte Park all the way to the other, which is roughly about three kilometres. And it took me about an hour. You can make the trail as long or short as you like and collect the Explorer Trail pictures over several visits. So here's the map. I managed to find some of them, but I'll have to go back again and finish the booklet. Maybe you can help me find number five, which is the log pile plaque. If you know, can you share the answer with me on our Facebook page? Fun fact, log piles are really important habitats. Full sun will dry and heat the wood and it will be too hot to support lots of life. Dense shade is good for fungi, but maybe too cold for most insects. It's tricky finding the right log pile to live in. So if you find any bugs near a log, make sure to put them back next to that log. Birds feed on insects that make their homes in old wood. In large gardens, a decaying tree with a broken branch or small hole might provide a nest site for birds or even a bat. So back to my rucksack. What else do I have? I have a bag pot for collecting bugs, but you can use a yoga pot or a plastic container. I have a paintbrush, which is my bug persuader and a magnifier so I can look at things closely. Lastly, I have a separate bag which contains some items for an activity which I will share with you later. So, my bag is packed, I've chosen where I'm going. Now to think about what else can I do on the walk to turn it into an adventure. Are you ready? So another thing I really like to do at the beginning of a walk is test my squirrel senses. At the beginning of a walk, I find a little stone, a net or a pine cone, and I hide it somewhere. Sometimes I'll cover it with a little earth like the squirrel does, but this does make it harder to find later. At the end of my walk, when I'm back to where I first started, I try and remember where I hid the item and usually I'm lucky and I find it again. I have, however, lost a few acorns that way, which could now be little trees. Fun fact, did you know squirrels are generally able to find about 95% of the food they bury? They use their amazing sense of smell and super eyesight, what we call wide angle vision, with exceptional focusing power or zoom in power. A squirrel can see what's next to and above without moving its head. Can you see what's above without moving your head? They also have really good memory and we think they create a map in their heads of where they bury all their nuts. Animal Simon says, you can do this whilst walking or on the spot. I'm sure you probably know how to play Simon says, but for those who don't, the aim is for a leader, Simon, to try and catch as many people out as possible by getting them to follow the instructions you give them. The trick is you only follow the instructions the person says to do. For example, I may say, 
Joe says, sit down. And everyone must follow the instruction and sit down. However, if I just say, sit down, and you follow the instruction by sitting, you're out. I like to change the name, Simon, to, a he to whoever is the leader. So Joe says, Sue says, Reese says, Stu says, etc. Now, to make this more exciting, we're going to turn it into an animal, Simon says. So instead of following instructions, you will have to move like an animal. What animals do you think you might see out on your walk? Hmm. What animals? A bird or a woodlouse, an ant, or maybe even a fish. Shall we have a practice? Yeah? So let's go with a worm and a bird. The action for a worm is to wiggle about. Let's see you wiggle. Can you wiggle like a worm? That's great. The action for a bird is to flap your arms like wings. Have a quick practice of being a worm and being a bird. Are you ready to play? So, Joe says, be a worm. Did you wiggle like a worm? Well done. Joe says, be a bird. Did you flap your arms like a bird? Diane. Be a worm. Did you wiggle? If you did, then I'm afraid you're out because Joe didn't say to be a worm. Oh dear. Do you want to try one more time? Are you ready? Joe says, be a bird. Joe says, be a worm. Joe says, be a worm. Be a bird. Hopefully I caught some of you out then. I've played this with one person and a whole class. The more people, the longer the game. You could play this uh, by thinking of your own actions for animals you see whilst on your walks. How about a woodlouse or a fish or a spider? Fun fact. Did you know wolf spiders, the really, really fast ones you see running under stones and logs, don't spin webs to catch their prey? They go into stealth mode and wait patiently until their dinner gets up right close enough that they can pounce on their prey. What action could you do for a wolf spider? Hmm. Hedgehogs are sleepy and really cute. They rely on hedgerows and woodland edges for food and shelter and curl up into a ball safety. What action could you do for a hedgehog? Remember that bag? Well here it is. And now I can show you what's inside. So I have a piece of string that I've tied together at the end to make a circle and I also have some cocktail sticks which I've turned into flags by adding some duct tape. So for this activity, the micro habitats activity, you're going to have to think like an ant or imagine you're a spider. So find an interesting spot, somewhere that is safe, where you can sit without blocking any of the pathways and place your circular piece of string on the floor. This is your mini beast theme park. Now look closely at the terrain, look at the ground and imagine you're a mini beast. Which one are you going to be? Hmm, a spider? Or how about a woodlouse? I think I'd be an ant because we know they are super fast and super strong. Now look at the space inside your string. 
and imagine the things within it are part of a theme park. Is there something that looks like a roller coaster? Or a bouncy castle? Is there a nice spot for picnics? Or somewhere you can get a drink? Where would the toilets be? So, here is an example of one that I've done. I didn't use string or flags, I used sticks and I made my own flags. I thought the lumps and the bumps in this stone look like a climbing wall. So I put a flag on top so anyone can see. I used the leaves to make a slide. We all get hungry and thirsty when we're at the theme park. So I've made a little picnic area with some water and some seats. What else could I add? Maybe a car and car park if I was slow like a slug so I could get around super quick. Maybe a hotel so I can stay the night somewhere safe. So a fun fact. Did you know spiders' bodies have two parts? From tarantulas to jumping spiders, they all share this common trait. A harvestman, or daddy long legs as I call them, are not actually spiders, but very closely related cousins in the arachnid family. They don't have the glands spiders need to create silk for webs. So next time you see one, Count how many body parts they have first. You may have noticed, but we have a special visitor to Cardiff Castle. You'll need to be quick if you want to see him as he's set to fly away Sunday evening. Uh, so for a long time, he would come and visit Wales, but he wouldn't really stay as there weren't many friends for him here. He's here to celebrate and thank you because now, with a little help from us, there are loads and loads of red kites in Wales. This is exciting because if we can help bring back the red kite, what else could we bring back? Hmm, maybe not dinosaurs or the dodo, but how lovely would it be to see more of the animals we love in Wales? To find out more, visit our Revive Our World webpage by following the links in the description below. Other things you could do is listen to birdsong. You could listen to it and it is very relaxing. Unless you have a jay or a magpie, they can be a little bit screechy. <laughs> Why not find a quiet spot, close your eyes and have a listen. Some birds are quite tricky to identify through song, but others, like the collar dove and the great tit, are easy to identify once you know what to listen for. Use our wild challenge sheet to help discover what birds are tweeting near you. The link is in the description below. Another really lovely thing to do is look at the Natural Resource Wales activity booklets. Uh, there are loads of great ideas in these booklets and they have uh, all different themes like science and technology outdoors, trees and woodlands, language and literacy. There's something for everyone and you're learning whilst doing them too. I've shared the links to these in the description box below too. Another great thing you can do for nature is the City Nature Challenge. This is a global citizen science collaboration to record urban wildlife. This year, we're working with friends across the city to represent Cardiff, Newport and the Gwent levels and we'd really love you to get involved. So join us for a weekend of self-led fun and science including free bilingual resources to help you learn about your local wildlife, guidance on how to take part in the City Nature Challenge, online talks and videos for families, schools and adults and also activities you can do at home to encourage wildlife to visit. For more information, visit our website or Eventbrite page. The links are in the description below. So what next? We'd love to hear about your wild trail adventure. 
You can do this in lots of ways. You can share your own wild trail adventure with us on social media. You could share your thoughts and discoveries, photographs and drawings, or anything else wild trail related, and use the hashtag Wild Cardiff, hashtag Wales Outdoor Learning Week, and if possible, hashtag what Cardiff ward you live from, for example, hashtag Rumney. You can send us your wild trail adventure at gnarcardiff at rspb.org.uk and we'll upload it to our website so everyone can enjoy. You can join our Facebook group and subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with the Giving Nature a Home project in Cardiff. You can also check out our website. You can sign up to the RSPB Wild Challenge through the RSPB website. And lastly, but for me probably most importantly, we would love to hear your feedback to help us develop and improve our project. The link to the feedback form is in the description below. So thank you, Dioch, for watching our video, and I hope you have a great time trying some of these activities. Bye for now.